Hey, good evening, everybody. This is Jeremy Williams with Sort of Stock Mopars. I had a failure on my front uh, wheel bearings for my 2005 Dodge Ram 3500 4x4. Uh, I figured I'd take the opportunity to show you just how easy this is. So I've got to replace them. I got the new parts here. I've got all the tools I need laid out. Uh, and I'm going to go through those real quick so that if you do start this job, you can make sure you have everything so that you're not having to run to the hardware store with your truck up on jack stands. So first things first, you're gonna need your new wheel bearing. I got this from O'Reilly's. Uh, part number for Master Pro, looks like 515061. It's 515061. Uh, I love making things easier. So if you have an impact gun, uh, please try to use it. Uh, if not, it's okay, you can use a breaker bar. I use a breaker bar for some of the things that I can't get the gun into anyways. So if you have a breaker bar, I'd suggest use this as well. Even if you have an impact gun, make sure you have a breaker bar. With the breaker bar, you're gonna need a few sockets. You're gonna need a three quarter. Now, I'm gonna need this for my lug nuts and a couple other things. You're also gonna need an 18 millimeter right here, and you're gonna need a half inch. Uh, I'm sure there's the metric equivalent to that, but a half inch will do you just fine. Uh, you're also gonna need a couple other things, right? You're gonna need a flathead screwdriver, and then you're gonna need some pliers. Whether you can get some regular pliers or some needle nose. Obviously, the needle nose makes it easier for the cotter pin, so I'd highly suggest using that. For the castle nut, you're going to need a 1 and 11 16 inch socket. Uh, I had to run around to find this. It's not really easily available. But um, you know, if you contact uh, O'Reilly's and whatnot and ask them to order it, they can get it to you. So 1 and 11 16 inch for the castle nut. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, first thing we do is go ahead and remove this cotter pin. I'm just going to kind of knock this guy straight. Pull it out easier. Don't lose that unless you got something to replace it with. All right, now while it's still on the ground, I don't have it jacked up yet. I'm gonna go ahead and break this castle nut free. Now, before I started this, I used some uh, PB blaster, right? You look at these nuts and bolts and there's a decent amount of surface rust on them. So if you can, soak them up with something, WD-40, free off something right give yourself an extra hand okay i'm gonna go ahead and get this on okay all right now that's off i'm gonna go ahead and jack it up put it on jack stand so we can get to work all right now that i've got it up i'm gonna go ahead and take the wheel off Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove the two bolts that hold the caliper on. usually set these together somewhere just so I don't forget them. Once you've got that off, you're going to take your flathead screwdriver. You see these two holes here in the caliper. Go ahead and place that screwdriver in there. Against the pad, just compress the piston a little bit. That'll make it a lot easier when you go to pull this caliper off. I got a fair amount of brake test, so I'm gonna put some gloves on. Okay. The caliper's off. Just gonna go ahead and set this on the top, just like that. Now once you get the caliper off, sitting on top, you gotta go ahead and remove the bracket that holds these. Uh, of course, once you remove the pads, just get these out of the way. Uh, 
If you notice, these pads are brand new. I just did this job and didn't think to look at the wheel bearings. It's that phrase, you don't do it right, you end up doing it twice. Okay, now the two bolts are these two guys you can see. So this one here, there's one up top here as well. These are gonna be a size 18. Now if you can get your impact gun in there, awesome. If not, don't fret, just grab the breaker bar. Make life 10 times easier. Okay, it comes right off. Just want to make sure you keep your hardware here, unless you plan on replacing it. And don't worry. Okay, once you got the bracket off, now you're clear to start removing the, the rotor here. If uh, you're replacing the rotors, I'd imagine you've got quite a few miles on them. Maybe difficult to get off. Just take a rubber mallet hit it back and forth, but since these are pretty new, I can come off pretty easily. Just gonna go ahead and set that down to the side. Okay. Take you back here to the front. Now it's time to remove that castle nut. Okay, now that the cast on that's off, got to go ahead and get the four bolts that are on the back side of the hub. Uh, there's two on each side. Uh, you can use a six inch extension to get to them if you can't reach them with the ratchet you've got. We've got the first one here. You can see the second on the bottom. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get these off. Okay, so last of the four bolts, you can see there's one here, one right below it, two on the other side. Once you've got those four bolts out, all you need to do is start uh, prying on the hub. Now there's a couple tricks you can use. One, you can put an extension on the back side over here, turn the wheels and it'll pop it out for you. Uh, on the other side, it doesn't have any issues like that. All I had to do was give it a few whacks on the main shaft. As you can see, this is a dry hub here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean some of this gunk off, clean off a little bit of the surface rust and then put a little thin coat of grease on it. So that A, it's easier for me to reinstall the new one and B, it also helps prevent some of this corrosion. So I'll put that on when I'm getting ready to install the new one. Okay, so there's the dust shield, the old wheel bearing, 
Now follow in this ABS cable. You'll see that it connects right up here on the fender. See this little guy here? Behind that, you're gonna have the connection point for this ABS. So you're gonna wanna take like a small screwdriver, something, pop this out of here. Or if your thing's weak enough, you can just pull it out by hand. And you'll have this cable right here. Okay, the sensor, and push this little red tab up. Right there, once it's all the way up, using two hands, you're gonna wanna apply pressure on the red tab, and grab the bottom, blow it. If it doesn't wanna come out, just like this is doing, take that screwdriver, and just push it gently down, right above this lip here. And as you can see, it actually shoved it down just a little bit. So now it comes right out. And just like that. The old wheel bearing is out. Now in the reverse order, you're gonna go ahead and install the brand new wheel bearing. Okay, we've got it all back together. All I have left to do is put the wheel on. I just want to show you a few things. So I've got you know, the cotter pin snugged in with the uh, cast on that there. I've got two bolts for the caliper on, two bolts for the caliper bracket on. As you can see the uh, ABS speed sensor there. I've got traced down with the brake line, back up behind its normal position and I'm ready to go. So I'm just gonna put the wheel back on, lower it down, call it a day.